It's time now for the Words of Knowledge broadcast with Pastor Alan Harrington, pastor of the World's Church of the Living God, located at 2110 Glass Street, Chattanooga, Tennessee. Now, here's Pastor Alan Harrington. Worship the King. Worship the King. He is high and lifted up in His place. I said, Worship the King. Worship the King. Everything else should be secondary. And that's something that we, we, we find difficult. And I, I know why it's difficult for some. It's difficult for, for people in the church world. We might talk about it just a little bit today. Uh, it, it's difficult for people to really accept God for who he really is. To accept Jesus for who he really is. People don't mind Jesus being their savior. That's fine. Save me from my sins. Keep me from going to hell. But I can't accept you, say some, whether they speak it verbally or not, with the, the way people live, I can't accept you as being my Lord. I'll accept you as Savior, but not the Lord of my life. I'll be my own Lord, thank you. You know, I'll run my own business. My own, you know, and, and, and he doesn't come in, into a, a person's life as just Savior or just Lord. He comes in as Lord and Savior. And it's hard for people to see the divinity, uh, the holiness of Jesus, the divinity of God, the omnipotence of God, the power of the Almighty God who spoke and nothing became everything. God who's always been, always will be the only true God. Talked about himself. He talked about his, even the, the nations of the world are, as a drop in the bucket to me. The people in, in the world are, are, are less than nothing to, to, to God. He's God. He sits upon the circle of the earth. He is God. He says, is there any other God? I know not any. You know? He didn't know. He's, no, he's I am God. And he is. But I saw people who really can't see that God is God. What does that mean to be God? Absolute. Absolute authority. Unquestionable governance. Unquestionable leadership. No other God worthy of more praise than we could ever give in all eternity. God's awesome. So we, we might talk about that. Then it's, it's just so sad. I thank God that because of his love for humanity, thank you, 
Because God so loved the world that he gave Jesus. He gave Jesus to down Calvary's cross for the sins of the world. And the only way to receive that is to really hear the word of God, to hear the, that good news that God sacrificed his own son, the word of God, sent his word, the word of God incarnate, the lamb of God, yes, sent him here because God never breaks his own order. Without the shedding of blood, no remission of sins. It's been the way throughout the Old Testament, and now we have that eternal covenant made through and by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Shed his blood for the sins of the world. And on top of that, after, after dying, being buried, being put in a tomb for 72 hours, three days and three nights dead, the Spirit of Almighty God raised up his son from the dead. Jesus just didn't get up and walk out of there. He was dead. So when God raised him, yes, he did get up and walk out of there. <laughs> but he was dead. Praise God. God raised him and he's alive forevermore. He is the risen Christ, the glorified one. And I hope that everybody knows him. Everything about God, we talked about it a little bit last week, and we're going to talk about it just a little bit more today. Since I've had a couple of questions this week, I said, well, I might as well just, you know, just bring it. You know, just talk about it a little bit. And then we're going to talk about a couple of other things. We're going to talk about it, about the Word of God. People have asked me different things about that concern Revelation. Not just the book of Revelation, but Revelation, how it comes to be. And, and, and uh, St. Matthew tells us, I believe we talked about it last week, about how that everything that, that, that about God really is a revelation. Re and and St. Matthew, I believe it was St. Matthew, Jesus said that no man knows the Son but the Father and the Father. Nobody knows the Father but the Son, nobody and he to whomsoever he will reveal him. Everything about God, his word, everything, it's about revelation. And you find that uh, it, it's always been that way. God has always used men, men of God that he's called. We, we read about the Old Testament prophets. Came and spoke, gave the Lord thy God, says this or that. God is still speaking. God has always, he's always spoken directly to the hearts and minds of some. God is still speaking. He's still God. Jesus Christ the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. He's still the same. He's still God. God still leads his people. Once, once a person gets saved, he, still, he, still, he, he, st he communicates with them through his word for sure. And he communicates with them personally. Yes, he does. Each and every sheep of God. And, so, and it takes, sometimes it takes a while to be able to discern. Because there are a lot of voices in this world. There are a lot of religious voices. When Jesus was ready to start his ministry, led up of, of the Spirit to be Tempted, fasted 40 days, 40 nights without food, water, whatever. And who came to tempt him? The tempter, Satan the devil. He said, if you be, if. See, see people always want to question God. Whatever you do, don't question the validity of God. Don't do that. It's all right to ask God questions about certain things, certain matters, things you want to know, talk to them about, do, please, by all means. And whether he responds to you right then or not, he will, you expect that answer from the Lord. He wants all of us to grow into that. When Jesus said, no, I won't tempt the Lord that guy, he, he used scripture on the tempter, on the evil one. 
And then Satan came right back and did what? He quoted scripture. He said, yeah, but it's written. It's also written that this and that and this and that, you know. And then he told him, jump off this, this pinnacle, this tower here, and, and, and you'll be praised. The people that will admire you and, and, and honor you. God said, they're really, take you in. He's, Jesus quoted, nah. he, and he, Satan, first, he quoted, he said, because it's written, what? Say, no, nah. say, he won't suffer you to dash your feet against the stone. Yeah. He's going to send his angels to bear you up. So Satan does quote scripture. And there are times when he does. He, he does. He, he knows he creates a conflict in the human mind. Listen, that's why we must live in and by the Spirit of God. God will never tell you anything. He won't even use scripture that conflicts with his personality, with his word, with his purpose in and for your life. He never will. Yes. Satan will try to twist scripture. So you got to know. His voice, Jesus said, my sheep shall do what? They'll hear my voice, and they will. And you have to grow into it. That's why we, we, we talked about it last week, so we're not going to get all these scriptures again. About people who by reason of use have their senses what? Exercised. Their spiritual senses, not just their eyes and ears and uh, naturalized and ears. But our spiritual senses, we have them exercised to the point, to, by reason of use, where we can do what? Discern between good and evil. We can know who's speaking. We can know when the voice of the Lord comes. And, and he won't always come and, and, and holler and shout at you. Yay, the Lord. That, whoa, wait a minute. You know, he won't do that. You know, through, through the, the mouth of a prophet. And God has used, he's got prophetesses up from even in the Old Testament, New Testament too. There was a prophetess mentioned in the New Testament. But we find that sometimes that voice comes as a still, quiet voice. It came to one of the prophets as he was hiding out for his life in the cave. First the glory, the thunder, the lightning, the, the roar, the earthquakes. And then there came that still, quiet voice. Sometimes it just comes as a, just as a, so plain. Have mercy, Jesus. Thank you. So plain. You cannot deny it. It's the voice of the Lord. So, the things that, uh, that we know of God have been taught, passed on for centuries from generation to generation by men of God. And of, and of course, being taught by men, of course, the, the church was, in, even the Old Testament church, infiltrated by people who say I believe, but they didn't. The New Testament church, people say I believe, but they didn't. And that's why I think it was the church of Philadelphia that... Uh, in, in, in the book of Revelation, one of them, the Church of Ephesus, one of them, which one was that? We, we, we talked about those who are of the synagogue of Satan. You know? See, so there are churches who say, I am the bride of Jesus, but they really don't believe enough. They don't believe in such a way where their whole lives are committed. They, they have heard the truth, the gospel. They believe it, they've received it, and they have totally submitted themselves to, to God. They have been cleansed with the word of God and by the washed in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. They are saved. They belong to God. And they have no reservation whatsoever about living for him. And some people have, have the wrong, wrong idea about living for the Lord like it's a dull board. No, it's not. It's full of beauty, full of laughter, full of fun. A lot of freedom, and there's some things that God might, restricts from us, of course. So what was the question? What was the question? We had somebody ask about, uh, we're going to read it. In Saint, it was in St. Matthew, I believe. St. Matthew 17, 10. 
And his disciples asked him, saying, Why then say the scribes that Elias must come first? Mm -hmm. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Elias truly shall come first mm -hmm. and restore all things. But I say unto you that Elias is already come. Hallelujah. Is come already. Yes. And they knew him not, but have done unto him whatsoever they listed. Likewise, shall also the Son of Man suffer of them. Elias has already come. And they, they mistreated him. They did what they wanted to with him. They ignored him. And supposedly Elias was dead. And here Jesus is telling them, his, his disciples, those who, who've been with him, that Elias has already come. And they mistreated him. And then what happened? When he said that, what happened, brother? Then the disciples understood that he spake unto them of John the Baptist. He spake of John the Baptist. They had the same spirit. They had the same, he, John the Baptist had the same kind of spirit of, of prophecy that he, he, Elias had. So how did they understand it? Jesus didn't mention that about John the Baptist. How did they understand it? And this is what God, this is where God wants us to get. As Elijah, that, that, that's good, that's good. As, as, as he prayed when they were surrounded, I believe, by the army of, 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 of the Syrians. Elijah and his servant. Elijah was cool and calm. Might have been Syrians or <laughs> might have been Israel. I don't know. Well, you can read it. Look it up in Kings. And the servant said, "Oh man, we're surrounded. They they they, they had them trapped." I said, "What shall we do, Master? How are we going to get out of this one?" And instead of answering the man, he prayed. He had the answer. He already knew. He prayed and said what? Lord, open the eyes of the young man that he may see. And this is what every pastor, no matter where, every man of God, every pastor who's been called of God wants more and more for himself, but more and more for his, his the sheep, he, the people of God. Open his eyes that he may see. And when God opened the, the servant's eyes, what did he see? Angels and horses and chariots of fire all, all around them on the mountains had surrounded the enemy. Right now, you'd be surprised what's around us now. You'd be surprised when you, we spoke a little bit about guardian angels. Yes, that, that you do have angels that God has given charge to watch over you, to help you, to take care of you. And some people tie that in with uh, Hebrews. We might read it. Well, they think it's just the, 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 the preacher that has a, a what? What kind of spirit? Yeah, well, yeah, deserve it. It's not just preaching. But the angels are sent to minister to the heirs of salvation. That's not just the preacher, that's all of us. That means to take care of them. Well, of course, the preacher, yeah, he, he does. He's got to wait on God's, well, he doesn't wait on the angel to tell him, no, why? Hmm? The angel might come and say, yeah, God sent me for a a message for you. Send an angel to, to, to talk to Daniel, bring a, a blessing to Daniel. But in this New Testament body of Christ, ministers are to minister by what? The spirit of the living God. Yes, by God's spirit. Yes, by God's spirit. Yes, the angels are really sitting here to watch over, to take care of us. That, that's what they do and to do the work of God on earth. So we're going we're gonna to get it in the, in the book of 1 Peter. We go there first. 
talk about this just a little bit, and then I've got a couple of other things to talk to you about. Everything about God is a revelation. You can't, you can teach, say like on scriptures in the Bible, you can explain it and, and make it understandable. You can make it understandable, but have you ever heard something, say in, in, uh, in, in a message it, from, from the word of God, where it seems like all of a sudden a light comes on and, 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 it, it, and, and, you, and you see it. And not only do you see that, that specific thing that's being talked about, you, you see how it's connected to something else greater. That's the revelation of God. That's God opening things up to you, for you. So in the book of 1 Peter, the first chapter, starting with the seventh verse, yes, sir. talks about trials, still enough talking about trials. 1 Peter 1, 7. That the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold that perisheth. Now, we've heard that for years, haven't we? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Have you ever been going through a trial and, and you recognize what it was? And even though it's painful, hurtful, whatever it is, very challenging, of course. Say, Father, thank you. Because you knew in some way God was working this for your good. Thank you for bringing me through. Yes, sir. The trial of your faith much more precious than that of gold. Okay, all right. Yes, sir. Th though it be tried with fire, mm -hmm. might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And we do look for him, don't we? Yes, sir. We do look for that return. And who's Jesus coming back after? Who's going to be caught away? Those who are looking for him. Those who have been saved. Those who are expecting him. We yearn to be caught away. That day is coming. Those who have the Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost, inside of them, that's going to quicken our mortal bodies, catch us away. Because flesh and blood should not enter. So he's coming. He is going to return. This world is really not looking for Jesus. You can tell church folks, church, just mere church goers, aren't really looking for Jesus. But he's coming back. Yes, sir. He's coming after his church. He's coming, and I believe he's coming soon. Go, go ahead and read, brother. Okay. Whom having not seen, ye love. Hallelujah. And whom though now ye see him not, ye yet believing, ye rejoice with joy. Yes. Unspeakable and full of glory. Go ahead, read it. Receiving the end of your faith even the salvation of your souls, of which salvation the prophets have inquired. Now, this salvation that God has given us, this blessedness, those men walked with God, God walked with them. But to be called a son, this salvation that we have, where we have literally been born into the family of God. Well, we have taken on, not, not through any, any righteous acts of our own, nothing like that, because we, we were deserving, because we were not, but to have taken on the DNA of God. Some of us might not realize that. To have been born into the kingdom of God. When Jesus told Nicodemus, you must be born again, he wasn't playing. He wasn't just talking about joining a church. I straightened it up and, and trying to live a better life. He wasn't, everybody, anybody can do that. He just wasn't talking about getting water baptized. Anybody can do that. He was talking about getting baptized into the body of Christ, the family of God, by the spirit of the almighty, by the spirit of the living God. So the prophets wanted to look into this because this salvation was promised that God was going to visit humankind. He was, he was going to send his son. And a lot of, from, from way back in, in the book of Genesis, Jesus was spoken of. 
Isaiah taught about him. You find him in, in, in Ezekiel. You find him throughout the old, the prophets knew he was coming. David, praise God. Yes, sir. He spoke about him. His crucifixion. His death, burial, resurrection. The son of the living God. And the prophets, they, 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 they asked God about it. They, they sought it. And they prophesied it. They taught it. But it, they knew that it wasn't for them, for their time. Praise God. Yes, Not the salvation that we have. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Praise God. Jesus told his own disciples, many kings and wise men have desired to see the things that you see. Pray, they, 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 they were looking for it. They, they wanted to see this coming Messiah, this deliverer that will come and rescue, deliver God's people, save them from their sins, and where the Almighty would deposit a portion of his spirit in them, where they would live with the spirit of God in them. So that, that's what this is saying. These prophets and wise men, they, they inquired of the Lord diligently. Why? Uh, with salvation, the prophets have inquired and searched diligently mm -hmm. who prophesied of the grace that you, should Jesus. come unto you. Mm -hmm. Searching Good. what? Or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ, which was in them, did signify. Hallelujah. When it testified beforehand the suffering of Christ. Beforehand. Beforehand. They knew it wasn't going to happen in their time. So they knew they were prophesying and ministering by God's Spirit, prophesying by God's Spirit for the generations to come. Read it. When it testified of beforehand the suffering of Christ and the glory that should follow yes. unto whom it was revealed. So everything has to be revealed. It was revealed to them that what, that, that what? Not, that unto, not themselves. unto themselves. Mm -hmm. But unto us. Unto us in they, our day. Yes, in, in the, the days of the early church. Yes, sir. In our day. Not they knew that they weren't prophesying about their own salvation, their own deliverance. They were going to be saved, of course. Don't think that God's just forgotten the Old Testament prophets and saints of God. No, they're going to be guests yes, sir. at the marriage supper of the Lamb. But they knew that Jesus had to come on the scene first. And they knew that he was coming in a certain generation. They didn't know exactly what time. But it was revealed. It wasn't yes, about sir. them. But yes, unto us. Yes, sir. Go and read it. Unto whom it was revealed that not unto themselves, but unto us, they did minister the things which Thank are you, now reported unto you by Amen. them that have preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Ghost Hallelujah. sent <laughs> down from heaven. With the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven. With the anointing of God, the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And it said, this is so deep. So they prophesied about it. They talked about it. And it's happened. And it said, it's so deep that the angels things, of God. Yes, sir. Read which it, things the angels desire to look into. They want to see, man, that God would take the rubbish of mankind. Save them. Have mercy on them and put his spirit inside of them. The prophets of old, they saw it. It was what? Revealed. Revealed to them. And that's why I have to get this one. It's over here in 2 Peter. You can read it too while you stand up there. 2 Peter. Okay, first chapter. 19th verse. 2 Peter 1, 19. Revelation. And, and the thing is, when something is revealed, just say for example, if, if, if something is, is revealed to you or to you or to uh, one of the ministers or whoever, 
nothing will be revealed to another minister to contradict that. But it's not that minister's interpretation. It's the revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's what it's all about. You have to know the voice of God. You have to know when God's speaking to you. You have to know what God is, what he's saying in his word. Read, read brother. Okay, 2 Peter 1, 19. Mm -hmm. We have also a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto ye do well that ye take heed as unto a light that shineth in the dark place, mm -hmm. unto the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Go ahead, no, read knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. Now, again, somebody tell me what that means. No prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. Not just from, from, from the one doing the, that might read it centuries later and speak about it centuries later. But even in the days of the one that God used to, to prophesy, to speak it, or to teach it, it wasn't that prophet's own private interpretation of the will of God. It was a revelation. And, and that's where people mess up. We try to figure God out. And, and, and it's, it's sad, but we do it. Humans do. We minimize it. We try to bring God to, to someone who thinks like we do, and he does not. And he said that, my thoughts are not your thoughts. So every, everything uh, about God, is, it, it's got to be revealed. You have to see it through the revelation of God. It's not a private interpretation. It's, it, it's not where, you say, well, God showed me so-and-so. And I said, well, he told me this. He didn't show me. You know, it's, it's, it's not where everybody can have their own idea. Yes, sir. That sounds like a, a conflicted, confused up God, doesn't it? But God's not confused. Sure. And, he, and God is not the author of confusion. We'll read that in a second. No matter where God's people all around this planet, and, and mind you, everybody doesn't have the same spirit. I understand that. I understand that. But they're going to teach the same things. And they're not going to be in opposition to each other. Not God's people. So it's not about private interpretation. It's because it says that no prophecy, 21st, read it. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, mm -hmm. but holy men. Listen, so, so these men just weren't dreaming up words to, to preach on and talk about then, right? Sure. It didn't come by the will of man. But holy men of God Hallelujah. spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. By the Holy Ghost, by God's anointing, by God's spirit. And they couldn't help but speak the words of God. They spoke, and later on, people who, who would read, or, or the men of God, who would read those same words, they would see the same things that they saw. They would preach the same message that they preached. It doesn't change. Second Timothy 3.15 And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures which are able to make thee wise unto salvation mm -hmm. through faith which is in Christ Jesus. Amen. It's all about God. It's all about Jesus. Go ahead. Read, read brother. All scripture is given by inter inspiration of God. Did he say all of it? Yes sir. I believe it. All scripture. All scripture. Now the world has tried to taint it. But scripture is given by inspiration of God. It's God what? God breathed. It says in one place in one of the books of the gospels, as Jesus had his, his disciples round about him, he, he taught them, he loved them, he, just, he cared so much about them. And then he breathed on them. Before the day of Pentecost ever came and said, do what? 
receive ye the Holy Ghost. All scripture is God breathed. It's given by inspiration of God. All scripture, all scripture by God's men is God, still, God breathed, is taught by revelation of God. But you, you can't teach a person how to preach. You can teach people the word of God, you can do, but you can't teach them how to preach. But all scripture is given, is given by inspiration of God. What are we going to do with it? We can read this book from cover to cover at least once a year. Just read scripture. And we'll still never get it all. We'll never learn it all. God doesn't, he won't open everything up to us. But what he does open up to us, let's, let's, please let's do that. Yes, sir. Let's love one another. Yes, sir. Without partiality and all. Let's just love each other. Let's be able to forgive one another. Yes, sir. Let's take God at his word. Praise God Almighty. Let's, let's live in one accord and, and one mind. Let's, 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 let's learn the character of God. But all scripture is God breathed. Everything is God inspired. Yes. Go ahead. And is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, mm -hmm. for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Yes. That the man of God may be perfect thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Amen. So it's God inspired. It's God, all scripture is. So it, since it's inspired by God, it's, it, must, it has to be revealed by God. It's got to be. Everything does. We can't just pick up the Bible. It, well, you can. You can just read some of it and get the understanding of some things that way because it'll point blank say what it is. But there's so much in here. And the way the disciples understood, he didn't say what well, else John the Baptist. No, they understood. They understood what Jesus was saying. They understood the, the, the character of God. They, they understood that, uh, say, when, when Elijah was going to be caught away, he, uh, Elijah said, well, when you leave here, let me have a portion of your spirit. You know, how, how can you do that? He said, okay. And he promised him. And God upheld his word. He upheld the word of Elijah. He said, well, if you see me when I leave, praise God, <laughs> I'll give you a double portion of my spirit. And he did. He did. How? If it's true, say a person professes Jesus and they don't receive him, which it is true, it's in the Bible. They don't get saved. But they sit around and hear the word of God, get, get their lives cleaned up because of the knowledge of, of the Lord Jesus Christ. But th their lives are still devoid. They're empty of God's spirit. Then the Bible says what? The, if the unclean spirit, when it departs out of him, later on he's going to do, he's going to come back and bring how many? Seven more, more wicked than himself. Now if spirits can move like that, when a person, they die, or the person gets saved, they give their life to Jesus. That spirit is cast, it departs from them. What does he do? So, oh, la di da I'm out of work now. Mm -mm. He goes and he attaches himself to somebody else's life. So if that can happen with evil spirits, well, it can happen also with, with the, the certain anointings and spirits that God gives his men. That can happen also. We all, all, everybody saved has the spirit of God. Everybody that's saved has God's spirit in them. But certain anointings, that's yeah, so, so, something different. Now let's go to St. Luke, the 24th chapter. And it says here in the 44th verse, and he said unto them, These are the words which I spake yes. unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the laws of Moses mm -hmm. and in the prophets 
and in the Psalms concerning me. Listen, now he told, he's, all this information is already there. It all about me, written of me, he said, in the law of Moses. And he told some, some, some of the religious folks of that day, the, the Pharisees and, and the scribes and all, he said, man, so you, so you all seek to kill me. Seek my life. Say you know God. He said, why don't you search what? Search the scriptures. For they are of which that testify of me. So you don't really know God. Search the scriptures. He's always been, been mentioned. He's always been taught. Salvation has always been promised. And he said these scriptures in the laws of Moses and, and the prophets and Psalms that concern to me, that they, they, they've always been there. Then and opened he their understanding. Then he opened their understanding. And, and that's what we all should pray for. More understanding of God. They didn't, they didn't get it. He opened their understanding and finally they understood. And that's, and that's, and that's why, it was, why the disciples, once he talked about John the Baptist said, Elias has already come and all that. Well, it's, it's, he opened their minds. He opened their understanding then for them to restore. Oh, man, a light came on. Sure, when we got saved, through the teaching, most of us, the, the preaching of the gospel from Pastor Hunter, from the overseer, even we might have been church goers at first. We might have you know, been involved in religion, different kinds of ways at first. But a light came on. A light came on. We heard something we never heard. We saw something we never seen. And we received someone we never knew. Praise God Almighty. God opened our understanding. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And he opened up the disciples' understanding here. So don't just take it that one time. Well, my understanding came up when the guy saved. Sure it did. But you want more understanding of God. Pray that God keeps revealing himself to you. More and more. There's always so much more. He opened their understanding that they might do what? Understand the scriptures. That they might understand the scriptures. And, and why? In, in the book, and, and, and he does say, he, he's got to reveal this whole thing to us. Let's see, St. John, St. John 20. I believe that's it. Okay. St. John, the 20th chapter. In the 21st verse, peace be unto you, as my Father has sent me, even so send I you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and saith unto them, receive ye the Holy Ghost. And he gave them the authority of God by the Spirit and he told them, his men, get, let, me, let me let you get it here in a minute. He said, whosoever sins you remit, they are remitted unto them. And whosoever sins you retain, they are retained. And of course, Ta uh, Thomas wasn't, wasn't there. He wasn't present when he appeared to him. People do call him Doubting Thomas. But Thomas, th thank God, was an honest man. He, he just, he couldn't see it. That somebody, that God would really raise somebody from the dead. That Jesus was raised from the dead. So here comes Jesus appearing to, to them in a room that was closed off, doors closed, locked, everything. And he tells them, be not faithless, but believing. And Thomas, brothers, saw it with the 28th verse. And Thomas answered and said unto him, my Lord and my God. Amen. Praise God. Jesus said unto him, Thomas, because thou, thou hast not seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet Amen. have believed. Amen. I hope you're one of those. Read, brother. And many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples. Listen. 
which are not written in this book. Hallelujah, Jesus. But these, what else did he do? <laughs> he raised the dead. They had a funeral buyer, buyer whatever they call it, going back, funeral procession. And he walked up to, to the, to the where well, they were carrying the dead and touched it and raised that person from the dead. Yes, sir. Went into people's homes whose souls and lives and minds were in agony over the death of their loved ones. Put out unbelievers and doubters. Yes, Took a young lady by the hand who passed away and spoke to her. Yes. He wasn't shouting at her, shaking her. Took her by the hand. Talitha Kumi. That's what I said to the arise. And she arose from the dead. Man who stood on board a ship and spoke to a storm. What else could he have done? Have mercy, Jesus. Gave the, the, the blind sight, the deaf, the ability to hear. Cast devils out of people. Have mercy. He did so much that we don't even know about. And I pray to God. I know that we will. As well, Corinthians tells us, you know, right now we're like, we don't know it all. We see through a glass darkly. But one day we're going to know it all. And I pray that while we're here, that God will continue to give us the revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ. More and more. Because it's all about him. And it's not about just knowing stuff, saints. Just to be knowing it. Or just to have the info where we can feel good about what we know. No, it's not about that. The revelation means a closer relationship with God. That's what we want. A better understanding of who he is. Being able to speak and, and, and you know it, you can feel so comfortable. Saying, Father, what, what about just whatever? And having conversation with God. And when he promises or when he speaks, you know it, it, it'll come to pass. You know it will. We don't know it all. See, many other things, brother, finish that. But these are written that ye might believe that Jesus Christ, Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. Amen. And that believing ye might have life Hallelujah. through his name. He gave us enough. Say, say right there. He gave us enough. Say, these are written so we can know it. We can know who he is. We, we can know, he, we, we can see it. His life was evidenced. By the things that the disciples witnessed, his, his, his death, burial, resurrection, all of it. The actions of, 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 the, of the Christ. He brought the kingdom of God. And still, it's sad that out of all that Jesus did, some people still could not believe. You're blessed. If you do, you are blessed if you believe. Some people could see and still, what? Not have the revelation. Not have the revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise God. Let's go to the 20th chapter. We're about to close out. 21st chapter. 21st verse, brother. Peter seeing him said oh, to Jesus. Oh, okay, it's there. Peter was doing the talking. Okay. Peter seeing him said to Jesus, Lord, and what shall this man do? Okay, what was he speaking about? John, because he's the one that Jesus loved and was laying on his chest. Okay, read. Jesus said unto him, If I will that he tarry till I come, what is that of thee? What is that to thee? Mm -hmm. Follow thou me. Amen. Read. Then went this saying abroad amongst the brethren, that the disciples should not die. Mm-hmm. Yet Jesus said not unto him, he shall not he die. He didn't say that. You're going to read. He didn't but, say he's not going to die. But if I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? Mm -hmm. 
This is the disciples which testified of these things and wrote these things. And we know that his testimony is true. Go ahead, read it. And there are also many other things which Jesus did, the which, if they should be written every one, Listen. I suppose that even the world itself could Hallelujah. not contain the books that should be that written. That is so true. Amen. Praise God. So what he lets us know, see, in some of these things he taught the disciples. He taught them a lot privately that is not recorded. And still, you have to have the revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ. You got to understand God. You have to understand God, his character, and the character of this book. God doesn't just come out and say everything, point blank. Jesus didn't come out and just say everything, point blank. You know, and sometimes people get turned around. And now I understand where people don't know well, what, what, how did the disciples, what did they know he was talking, how did they know he was talking about John the Baptist? He, they know, he probably taught them some other things but their eyes became open. Now we're about to close out, but I gotta, gotta get this in here. That's what he told the disciples one time, even the, the publicans and the harlots go in before, into the kingdom before you do. All the, they, they look for the knowledge. It's more than about knowledge. Just accept God, accept Jesus for he is, accept his word for he is, accept the revelation of God's word for what it is and seek more of him. And you'll be blessed, your life will be good. So let's see here, let's, let's go. Hebrews 1, 13. Since we mentioned it. Okay, go ahead. But to, but to which of these angels said at any time? Said he at any time, says, what? Sit on my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool? None, he gave none of the angels that authority. Amen. Only to the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay. And they not all ministering spirits. So are, are they not all ministering spirits? They're all, all the angels are like ministering spirits. And, uh, you know, and, 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 and of course, God's spirit is with us. No doubt. The angels of the Lord, and, and angels have certain ministry. Like the angel that came down and, and troubled the water. You remember that? And who else got into the water first? That would have been the one that's healed, right? Yes. Hallelujah. I would have run down there whole just in case something was going on. I'd... <laughs> have mercy on me, Father. I, I would. I, I want to help other people get there. But if I had a, whew, if I knew I had something going on, feel how I elbow you. <laughs> 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 to get in that pool first because whoever got in that pool first when the angel troubled the water that's the, the one that got healed and that's God to have mercy on me but I got to get to you so, so angels have different responsibilities they have different capabilities they have different authorities and they do aid in ministry in different ways but their primary purpose is to minister to all the saints of God to watch over them. That's the primary purpose. And that's why Hebrews also tells us that some of us might have, probably have, entertained angels unawares. So we have to be careful how, how we treat strangers. So, but these angels, just to clear that up, they are, they, we each, we have, people say two, I, I think it probably is, and I have reason for saying that. People say to, but I know we have angels to look after us and to watch over us. Praise God. Has anybody had that kind of experience? You don't have to say what it is. Hmm? Angels that will watch over you, guide you in your weakest times through challenge everything. That's something. God's, God's awesome. God is awesome. And these angels, still, they desire to look that I'm to keep this person that God has taken off the street and put his spirit in. Yeah, yeah. 
That's the, and, and they do it well. They do a good job. So pray. Do pray that God strengthens your angels. Gives them more and more strength. So are they not all what? Are they not all ministry spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? Uh, that, that's what they do. That's their purpose. To minister to believers. So you're never alone in this world. Amen. So when you feel like having your pity parties, just let that alone. Don't, don't, that, that, all that'll do is, is take you farther and farther down into depression. Get you in a place where some people are never able to escape from. You don't have to feel sorry for yourself. Amen. Know that God is with you. He said it, didn't I will do what? Never leave you nor forsake you. I believe that. I believe that. And not only that, we have companions to keep us. And I know they go to war at times with the unseen angels on the other, the dark angels to keep us, to protect us. When you read this, I just, just something to give you one more question. In the book of Acts, we're going to close out. But just thank God. If you, if you can hear God's word, you might not, you, you'll never get it all. And a lot of times, the more you learn, the more it does show you that you don't know. And, and it also, it causes you to ask more questions about certain things. That desire to learn and grow in God's grace and in the wisdom and knowledge of God, that's just a part of who we are. That's who we are. But when you hear something and you hear it, and some people say, well, I heard that message. Okay, maybe you have. You know? But you'll always hear, if you listen, you'll always hear something that you never got before. You never, never, never go without learning. Now, Acts, the 20th chapter, 25th verse. And now behold, I know that you, you all, among whom I have gone preaching the kingdom of God, shall see my face no more. He knew that he, that he was going to be put to death or imprisoned or, or whatever. He, he knew that. Wherefore, I take you to record this day, to record this day, that I am pure from the blood of all men. Why did he say that? For I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God. Everything that God gave me to teach you, I have. Everything concerning Jesus that God revealed to me to teach, I've, I've given it to you, the teaching about life, whatever it was. He said, I, I gave you the counsel, which is the teaching, the advice and wisdom of God's word. I've given you the counsel of God. So take heed, therefore, to yourselves and to all the flock, over which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers to feed the church of God, which he has purchased with his own blood. For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, and they did, not sparing the flock. Also of yourselves shall men arise, speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. Be careful, people, who want to be glorified, always in the limelight or something. Be careful of, of, of people like that. I, I thank God. That he, he's, he's kept us pretty good. He has. God has blessed us. And it, it go, goes on down. He said, when, 35th verse, and he says, I have showed you all things, how that so laboring you ought to support the weak and to remember the words of the Lord Jesus, to remember what? His words. And when he had thus spoken, he kneeled down and prayed with them. Prayed with them all. And they all wept sore and fell on Paul's neck and, and kissed him, sorrowing most of all for the words that he spake, that they should see his face no more. And they accompanied him to the ship. They knew that was the last they were going to see of their dearly beloved brother Paul. He said, I've labored, working. Why, why did he say that? It's just a lot of little things that you have to know. Why did he tell them that? He called all these elders together, this church. I don't know if this one was in Ephesus or what. The elders, the ministers, the, the pastors, the, the, the leadership of the church there. Why did he say that? Why did he teach to take care of your overseer, to take care of the, the, the pastors, to take care of those who labor in the word? Why, why, why didn't he? He called all these men together and said, I, I've, I've, I've labored working my own hands, taking care of my own need and, and those who came with me. Why did he say that? 
told the, I believe it was the church of Corinth, I've taken nothing from you. I robbed other churches, taking wages from them so I could do you service. Why did he tell, tell them that? But why would in particular tell the church of Ephesus that? Remember, he's called the elders together, right? And he spoke to them. He taught most of them. He taught them. They were the, the, the leadership, the, the, the church, the pastors, the apostles, the prophets in, in that church. And he would, Paul, he went from church to place to place. It's God used it, that man with revelations and speaking the gospel and teaching the gospel the truth of God's word. And he said that I say, you take care of what you got right here. I take care of myself because God had blessed him so rich. He said, I'm not going to take anything out of the church's mouth, of the, your, your pastor's mouth, your teacher's mouth. That's why he said that. So, you know, just read it. Just a lot of things you pick up and if you just read and ask God to show you. So we take the revelation of God. Wait on God, no matter what you do. Wait on, on the Lord. Don't try to, you can't push yourself into, revel, into revelation. You understand what I'm saying? You, can't, you, you, you can struggle, you can struggle to know and know. And it's good, it's good to, to, to learn, it's good to read, it's good to study. The Bible teaches us that, that but ask God for the revelation. I always ask God to let you see more of him. And he will. He will. I guarantee you that. You'll see more of it. Okay? All right, then. Praise the Lord. Now, that's, that's, that's it. That's the message for today. I, praise the Lord. Just revelation. Everything about God's revelation. And he will open up the understanding of the people. He, that's God's job. You can teach out of the book of Revelations, but you can't give the revelation. You've been listening to the Words of Knowledge broadcast with Pastor Alan Harrington. If you would like to write Pastor Harrington, send all correspondence to Words of Knowledge, P.O. Box 11005, Chattanooga, Tennessee, 37401. That's Words of Knowledge, P.O. Box 11005, Chattanooga, Tennessee, 37401. Tune in next week for another Words of Knowledge broadcast.